So my name is Shreyas Pradhan and I'll be talking about protein folding. So what is protein folding? Uh, we know that protein is formed from amino acids and it is a chain of amino acids. So intuitively you know that this chain of amino acids won't just tra straight forever, right? It has to fold according to some because of uh, because it wants to gain stability and this folding will be due to the forces it experiences because of its own atoms so here you can see this is the primary structure of the uh, protein which is basically the sequence of amino acids that forms it then this amino acid chain would fold into some structure known as the secondary structure now this structure is most commonly found to be uh, either an alpha helix or beta sheets so here is the alpha helix structure so even this alpha even this secondary structure to gain stability will fold into some tertiary structure which you can see here and um, so this is one possible tertiary structure it has folded to gain stability and this entire process is called the protein folding process and the main and the main challenge in the protein folding problem is to figure out how exactly a protein folds so what exactly is the mechanism driving this protein what exactly will be the native structure of the protein which is the final structure that the protein ends up in uh, all these are the questions that the protein folding problem focuses on so why exactly is this problem important? Um, so uh, this problem is important. So one aspect that uh, makes this problem so important is drug research. So uh, while uh, making drugs and studying drugs, we need to know how enzymes, which are proteins, uh, react with different sub substrates. So uh, for that, we need to uh, figure out the geometry of the binding site of the enzymes. And this is possible only if we can predict the sh native structure of these enzymes, um, which is the biologically active form of the protein. And for that, protein fold, the, protein fold, the solution to the protein folding problem is extremely important. So um, if we knew, uh, so currently, um, if we wanted to simulate this on a computer, um, the most naive approach would be uh, just randomly searching over all possible confirmers of the protein and uh, selecting the one with the lowest um, uh, free energy. But that is an NP-complete problem because it's exponential. Uh, it takes exponential time. We have to check all possible confirmers and that would take a lot of years more than the age of the universe so there are some algorithms w uh, which use things like gradient descent some use molecular dynamics models and some use pure physics based approaches but even then we're still close from performing a fast um, fast computer simulation to see uh, what the native structure of these proteins will be and that's where the solution of the protein folding problem is so important. If we know how in nature these proteins exactly fold, if we know the mechanism, we can tell the computer to hopefully do the same and we can perform simulations. And that would give such a boost in drug research, like even things like curing, uh, finding a cure for cancer might become possible. So yeah, that was the importance of the problem. So, um, uh, so we can uh, approach the protein folding problem using um, some researches that have been done uh, on this problem that gave various insights to it. The first one, the first uh, important research is Anfinsen's hypothesis. So what Anfinsen's hypothesis is that it states that the native structure of the protein um, is the thermodynamically most favorable state that the protein can end up in, uh, which is the free energy minima. 
uh, irrespective of what the initial confirmer is. What that means is whatever state you initially start off with, eventually the protein would uh, eventually the protein would fold into one particular native state, irrespective of the pathway it takes. So what it says in other words is that the native state of the protein depends only on the amino acid sequence and the conditions of the uh, process and not the kinetic uh, pathways. So here you can see that um, this is the normal case that Anfinson predicts would happen that the uh, thermodynamically most stable state would be the native structure. Um, there are a few conditions that need to be satisfied for this hypothesis to be true because in the end it's sort of an approximation it's not it's not all considering so it's the conditions are that uh, one the uh, energy minima should be unique that is um, if it has comparable other if it has other comparable free energy minima then uh, we won't be able to predict which one the protein's native structure will be because it can be both. So as you can see here, even this state has some amount of, um, even uh, this can be the native structure of the protein if it was say slightly lower. But um, here this is the native structure because that's uh, one unique free energy minima. But um, yeah, so that is one condition. Then another condition is that the free energy minima should be stable that is if it is not stable some slight changes to the uh, conditions of the experiment will change the native structure and that's not what we want that's not how a native structure should be like so that is one more condition and another condition is that there should not be any kinetic traps uh, in the pathway so if you see here the uh, free energy minima cannot actually be reached from say this confirmer here because as it descends down it might be trapped here it might not have the energy to escape out of this barrier it might just keep be trapped here so here is so this is somewhere that uh, the hypothesis fails because um, it predicts this would be uh, the native state but actually this is found to be the native state and yeah, that's why these conditions are important to the hypothesis. Um, so uh, he, Anfinson, did an experiment to back up his finding, uh, back up his hypothesis. So what the experiment consisted of, he took the enzyme ribonuclease and he uh, tried to denature it and uh, he observed, observed what would happen to the denatured enzyme. So uh, he used two denaturing agents for this. One is beta mercaptoethanol, which basically prevents the formation of uh, covalent bonds. That is, um, it prevents the formation of these disulfide bonds that form that give rise to the tertiary structure. And he used urea, which prevent uh, the formation of non-covalent bonds. That is, like stuff like ionic bonds and hydrogen bonding which would um, prevent the secondary structure from, from being formed. So in the first part of the experiment, he, um, he used both of these reagents on ribonuclease and hence he got a denatured protein, uh, which was not folded basically. And uh, when he removed both agents at the same time, uh, what he observed was after some time, uh, the denatured state, out this, is, this is not happening uh, in a cell or anything. This is happening outside in a ex lab experiment. So what he observed was this reverted back to its native state after some time. So that was a nice evidence to his hypothesis that uh, the native state depends only on the amino acid sequence and the conditions of the experiment. So the second part of the experiment was uh, to denature the protein but uh, but what he did was he removed the beta mercaptoethanol first and then after some time he removed the urea. What that caused is the formation of the tertiary structure 
with the incorrect secondary structure. So basically an incorrect uh, form of the protein was obtained. So uh, it did not revert back to its native state. Instead, the wrong disulfide bonds were formed and it reverted to a different structure. So what he did to the scrambled enzyme was um, use trace amounts of beta mercaptoethanol, which broke these disulfide bonds. And then after some time, it reverted back to its native state, which provided even more evidence for his hypothesis. So that was Anfinson's findings. Um, what then came Leventhal, who thought of this mind, uh, who thought of this thought experiment. So uh, he wanted to figure out the speed and the process of how a protein folds. So he assumed that there is a native state n that the protein wants to reach. And initially we start out with some random conformer of the protein. So he imagined the energy, free energy surface of the protein to be a flat surface. So the protein, uh, uh, according to this model, would have to randomly search on this surface. And then some at some point of time, it would encounter this minima. And it would just fall down this energy surface. And it would reach the native state. But the problem with this model was that uh, the random searching would take, even for a protein, if we consider one confirmer search in say even picoseconds, it would take around 10 raised to 27 years for the protein to reach its native state. And that is clearly not the case in real life. So this was the paradox that Leventhal faced, that how does a protein manage to search its native state in such a short amount of time? So the only explanation he found was that the energy surface cannot be a flat one. It has to be, it has to be dependent on local interactions. So, uh, so, and Im so basically this gave rise to funnel shaped energy surfaces, which uh, I'll come to in a moment. So one would think, how would you improve over this golf course like model of the energy surface? So this B part is one improvement. So how this looks like is that the surface is flat except for one pathway. This one pathway is sort of deeper than the flat surface. So by so the protein, it has to randomly search over the surface. And if it encounters any confirmer in this particular pathway, then it will do like a guided descent towards the native state and reach it. But again, the problem was that this was not applicable for starting with any initial state. And that is what Anfinson had observed, that if you start with any initial state of the protein, the protein would reach the minima in short amounts of time. So even this model was scrapped. A further improvement over this model was a funnel-shaped uh, energy landscape. So the funnel-shaped energy landscape solved the problem of the initial state uh, being any uh, ar ar arbitrary state because uh, no matter what state it starts with, it would perform a guided descent towards the native state. And that is, that uh, explains, that rationalizes the fact that uh, proteins find their native state uh, uh, very fast starting from any confirmer. But again, this, uh, the C diagram that you see here is very idealistic in nature. In reality, this is a more realistic model of the funnel, uh, funnel shaped energy surfaces because there would be a lot of hills and valleys in between. There could be kinetic traps and all. So this was considered to be the best uh, uh, energy surface um, to describe the protein folding process. Um, so the Y axis, uh, as you know, uh, represents the energy of the protein, free energy of the protein, and the all the other axes represent the conformational entropy of the protein. So the uh, the higher energy states would have a larger conformational entropy, which reduces as more native contacts are formed, and it would be really low um, uh, when it's in the native state because it would be really stable there. And this kind of diagram helps us visualize the possible pathways that the protein can take. It also helps us visualize like the possible kinetic traps the protein can fall in. 
uh, it relates the statistical mechanical properties of the protein like conformational entropy to the energy of the protein so this is a very useful way of representing the uh, energy surface so coming to the current research done in protein folding uh, like as i mentioned before there there have been various algorithms tried there have been various algorithm tried for protein folding none of which have gotten close to performing and performing a legit simulation on the protein like in a short amount of time but uh, recently uh, deep minds alpha fold which is an ai based algorithm um it was it is able to predict the native structure of small proteins which is a huge development in the field like uh, so here is a um, a simulation of a small structure uh, of, of for a small protein which is pretty fascinating because slowly and slowly maybe using ai we might be able to solve the protein folding problem maybe not maybe not 100% accurately but we can still try and get close so yeah that was about protein folding um keep enjoying science